<clears throat> all right. So, um, so, first of all, it's your son that has BCFS. Yes, and he's four years old. Okay. Well, first of all, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. good. A lot of information, but we're, we're making it. Good. So, when uh, was your son diagnosed? At three months old. At three. And how um, did the doctor... So, he was diagnosed right away, pretty much. Yeah, as an infant. He had a lot of uh, upper respiratory infections, mm -hmm. and the doctors here in Louisiana just couldn't figure out what was wrong, so they sent me to Texas. And Texas Children's Hospital, are the, they're the ones that made the diagnosis. Now, are you married? Yes, we yes we're married. How uh, how does your husband handle the diagnosis? Uh, we were kind of shocked, but we were relieved all at the same time to find out why he was, um, I guess, breathing the way he was and all of the issues he did have at birth. Because I've been told that it's always been harder for the husband to handle the diagnosis more so than the mom, which is the reason mm -hmm. why I asked. I guess at the beginning, yeah, he was kind of in denial, and every now and then he still kind of thinks that he's normal, but then I have to remind him, no, there is a diagnosis. Yeah. Because he, Bennett is one of six of our children. Okay. Um, and where is he going to school? He is, is he in a pre-K school here in our district. It's a public school that all my children went to, and they are handling him so far so good. Do you think you'll have to put him in a special needs school? And if you do, do you have a backup plan? I don't think at this point he will need a special needs school. And no, I don't have a backup plan. <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, medication? Uh, right now, he's only, he has asthma. And right now, we live by sugar cane and our meals are kind of grinding up. So right now, we're having a lot of uh, wheezing issues. But mm -hmm. other than that, he's a pretty healthy little boy. Good. That's good to hear. Yeah, yeah. Um. How about socially? How is he with other kids? Uh, he's a little shy at first, but once he gets warmed up, like in class, they said now he's raising his hand. He wants to answer questions. Um, speech is our biggest issue right now with him, and he just had surgery at the end of July with Dr. Richard Hall with Diane Altoona mm -hmm. in Dallas um, with for the pharyngeal flap because he was very hypernasal. Um, so the surgery went well. He, his voice is sounding so much better. So I think now that he realizes he has a voice, mm -hmm. he wants to use it. Okay. Um, how about, um, has he heart, had heart surgery? How is his heart? No heart issues at Good. all. None. Good. Yeah, that was a blessing. <laughs> um, and I guess we were talking about school. So he's doing well in school. The teachers are handling him well. Uh, the teachers, is, they're very interested in to learn about his diagnosis. Uh, actually, they went on the webinar that I held a couple weeks ago, and um, it's actually the age. She's a really good friend of mine, so she's really interested in all of his needs and what his special needs are, and uh, his IMP is in place if he needs extra help. He gets speech twice a week. He gets OT twice a week. He also goes to this motor lab that kind of keeps him um, on target because sometimes he gets a little antsy, but... Um, I'm sorry, the hospital ring. Uh, the motor lab keeps him pretty much where he needs to be uh, physically and uh, for therapy reasons. Uh, the school is really open to anything I suggest. I mean, they will get me whatever help he needs, they said. And um, so far, our school board is agreeing to anything that I ask for. So that's a good thing. What um, What is his busy, uh, biggest issue that you've noticed with him? Biggest issue as in education, uh, temper, overall? Or like, just overall? Like, what have you had to deal uh, most with? Uh, his biggest issue is uh, he, when he wants something, he wants it that right then and there. He yeah. wants me to stop. He wants whoever to stop. And he wants us to get whatever. Patience, I guess, is his biggest thing. Uh, and well, he has a temper tantrum, throws things, hits whatever. And he doesn't do it at school, so it might just be with his sisters, mm -hmm. um, which is, I can handle that at home. We just need to make sure it's not into the you know outside world also. Uh, speaking of his siblings, how does he get along with his sub siblings? Uh, the older sister's great. Now, he has a two-and-a-half-year-old sister, and they have this love-hate relationship. Yeah. They uh, want to be together, but once they're together, that they fight all the time. Yeah, all the time. Well, I still scream and throw tantrums when I don't get what I want, so... <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> not much different. Not what it is, I, I don't yeah. think what yeah, I don't think what you have it doesn't matter. <laughs> no, exactly. He just exactly. has an excuse. That's the only thing. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. Uh, when Dr. Sprinton we met a year ago, um, well actually it'd be two years in March, and uh, Sprinting kind of said the same thing. Bennett maybe is a little spoiled, uh, <laughs> but I'm like he is my only boy, yeah. and you know. With him having all the issues he had, I mean, he is. He is close to me, and that's just how it's going to be. Uh, I'm yeah. even mama's boy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's just how I have to explain it, yeah. And what about his um, uh, speaking? Uh, is, is his speaking, can you understand him when he talks? Um, it's getting better. I think I understand him more than anybody because I'm with him all the time. Sure. Uh, the teachers are having a little issue with some of it. But like we said, we just kind of use a lot of sign language, a lot of gestures. He will bring you to the item he wants or show you the color. Um, speech is really hard for him. Diane thinks he's going to catch on really quick now that he can probably pronounce the sounds, now that the pharyngeal flap is in place. So hopefully we can move forward with that because he gets it twice at school and then two times a week out of school with private sessions. So that's four times a week. Well, I actually, um, I couldn't speak properly until I was about 16, wow. but that was, you know, that was almost 30 years ago, and so now you can get that done, you know, right away, uh, yeah. get that taken care of, and my mom, like you, was really the only one who could understand me, just because you're constantly around him. Yep, you know um, their sound, their yeah. there, you know, a lot of it's still... Like, he tried really, really hard, yeah. and some of the sounds just aren't there. Like, a Lego, he'll do, it. oh. Yeah. You know, when everybody's yeah. like, what? Yeah. they just clueless, you know, and I'm yeah. like, finally, come show me what you want, you know, and he'll come show me a Lego. But an airplane, he kind of uses the, you know, yeah. like an airplane flying in the sky. Um, a lot of it's still sign language, but that's his way of expressing himself, and if that's what calms him, then we'll go with it. Yeah. Now, if you had to... Uh, list if, if you had to write down a list of his issues um, of his diagnosis what were they what would they be um, issues with his diagnosis would probably be well no I, not, not just with one diagnosis but like you know I have you know the list for me just goes on and on and on um, like I'm, I'm sure with so many other kids like me like what if you had to list his problems that he had, what would they be? Overall, Bennett, really and truly, we have been really blessed because everything I read, it can be very, very... Now, he's only four, so of course we're not into the depression part or the you know the schizophrenia part. Or He doesn't have heart issues. He uh, um, He's a picky eater, but what kid isn't a picky eater? I'm, I don't even blame that on that. Um, issues, speech is his biggest issue and patience and trying to get his overall conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, at the end of the day, I can say, how was your day at school? And he'll say, good, you know, and then it, it, I have to initiate, did you play with your friend? Yeah. Or, you know, did y'all, because he can't say, oh, we slid on the, you know, we went on the slide, we played on the swings, we colored green. Yeah. It's, um, so I guess communication with him and just forming that bond where he can tell me how his day went and um, his feelings, because I have the two-year-old who's talking my head off, you know, <laughs> yeah. and he's four, and he can't tell me what he really wants. Yeah. Um, so after, for his ish, I mean, breathing issues, we have problem with breathing because he's very narrow in the nasal area, but um, overall, Bennett is really a healthy, really a healthy little boy, so I was really blessed with that. Um, at school, he's wonderful. They, he has no social problems. He kind of, at first he was shy, but that's normal. Yeah. Um He's really healthy. I can't really complain about anything. I just wish he could talk more. That, yeah. That's the only thing right now. I know, yeah. Well, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> I know. Everybody tells me that. Everybody's like, Because well, now, because now, you know, that's what my mom wished for me. Now she can't get me to shut up, so. <laughs> and I drive my wife oh, crazy, yeah. too. Oh, I know, I know. But, you know, just to hear him explain how his day went yeah. would be phenomenal. You know, um, before the surgery, we really couldn't get anything out of him. It, um, a lot, Everything was very hypernasal, and the way his flap was working, it wasn't even making connections in the back of the throat to even make sounds come yeah. out. And then once he had the surgery, I would say 24 hours after the surgery, they must have came in to give him his medicine. 
And he immediately said, no. <laughs> like, and I looked around, I'm like, I didn't know who said it. My <laughs> husband was like, did it? And I'm like, he said no. Uh-huh. And it, like, he meant no, and it was like a real voice. Yeah. And I like, even his cry was different. It wasn't yeah. whiny, nasally. And uh, we got home three days later, and the girls were like, he cries different. He <laughs> talks, you know, it was it, it was amazing. And yeah. now he just needs to learn how to work that flat to make the sound that he really wants yeah. to project across. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time. You're I got a lot. Welcome. Well, I wish the best to you and your family. Okay. And uh, I hope to see you in the near future. You probably will, because we're trying to get to as many conferences as we can, and I, you know, I just want to get it out there. There's so many kids yeah. that have it that you know parents don't know, and it's it, it's kind of frustrating sometimes. And actually, we found you. You were one of the first ones I found, and I saw your. Uh, web and your I guess news broadcast um, with your parents when you were probably 15 maybe I don't even know wow. how old you were in that you were young and then I think Sprinton did a, a article with you also and then we met Sprinton and it was just it was amazing because yeah. finding a doctor that actually knew what I was yeah. talking about was a phen- that was like the best feeling I've ever had well, yeah. my, my mom whenever something new comes up I mean it's pretty much nothing new really comes up anymore but when i was a kid it's something uh-huh. if a new issue came, came up she would call my call french and and she would say is this part of bcfs and he'd go yeah, yeah. so <laughs> she yeah. he was really a lifeline to my mom i call her a lot too and i was like okay he's doing this because this have anything to do with the bcfs you know and now yeah. i kind of call diana a lot diana too now i don't know if you know her or not um is she a she, brunette yeah, not anymore. She's no. kind of a blonde. Oh, okay. All she's right. in the Dallas area. She's actually the Velo Corneofacial, um, I think she's on the board of directors now. She's something big with the whole uh, foundation. Uh, but now I kind of call her because she works with a lot of these kids too. And I'm like, okay, is this normal? Is she supposed to be doing this? Or is this just a boy yeah. thing? Yeah. And she kind of laughs at me. And, um, but a lot of the things that I do read, he does have, and I guess I just have to prepare myself for it to get worse. Same, yeah. I'm not sure. You know, take it one day at a time is what we do. Well, I just want to let you know I am going to put this on YouTube and Facebook if that's okay. That's fine. Um, we have a Friends of Quinn uh, fan page on Facebook that I put all my interviews up and stuff yeah. like that. Oh. So, all right. Well, thank you very much once again. Okay, thank you. All right, take care. All right, bye-bye. Bye.